everyone, Wolf of 1918 here, and today we're going to be discussing how to properly pack your tornister. basically unpacked my tornister and I've separated all my stuff and whatnot and I've gotten this all ready to do. Um, unfortunately, just as a preface, as sort of just an update for you guys in terms of what to expect with this tutorial, I unfortunately don't have everything that would go in here. I'm missing a couple bits of rations, I'm missing a couple bits of equipment, and I'm missing a couple bits of personal effects that would go into the tornister. If you want to see a full tornister get packed, you can actually go head over to the Infantry Regiment 63's reg uh, website, which I will have linked in the description and should be popping up in a card right about now. Uh, and that tutorial has the full tornister uh, setup done. Now, the reason why I'm making this when there's that resource that exists is because there are some people who do better with a full visual tutorial, like myself. Whereas while pictures are great and words are great, it's even better when you have all that put together in a video format. And I do have enough equipment to where the most difficult parts will be covered, such as making sure your boots fit in over your shirt and making sure that you can close the tornister properly and you can wrap your... Um, your Zeltbahn and your great coat around the tornister properly and everything looks tight. All that stuff's covered in the video. The IR63 website tutorial covers the other things, the smaller things that will fit into the tornister and how that goes and give you a full list of what to expect in the tornister. I don't really want to spend the time explaining all that stuff as there is that pre-existing resource that is very, very well done and I don't want to waste your guys' time when we can just get right into the meat of the tutorial. I am going to give a little bit of history on the Tornister and why it was packed the way it was packed and what the purpose was and some interesting things about German logistics during the war. If you want to skip ahead to just the tutorial, you can just go ahead and click the timestamp that should be popping around on the screen right now. But first, I just want to give a brief overview of the Tornister, why it existed, and give you guys some historical background to it as reenacting is both a fun hobby, but it's also important because it teaches history. So, uh, the Tornister... <clears throat> specifically the one that I have, which I think is an 1896 model. Uh, if that is wrong, there's a correction on the screen right now. I bought it off of nestob.com. I bought it after getting an M15 tornister and not really liking it too much, so I figured I'd upgrade and get this one. I had to replace the straps on it due to the Nestov tornister having the wrong straps, so I just bought replacement straps off Hessen, which are much better straps than uh, this tornister has. Now, a couple things about the tornister packs is what they would be packed with. Um, your tornister would actually have the iron rations, which would be the rations that you could only eat when ordered to. When your officer basically said, you are going to eat these rations, you're going to eat these specific parts of your rations, and no more, no less. Your marching rations would be in your bed bag, and they would be slightly different in terms of what was in them. Uh, the marching rations would have some more, would have food more geared towards marching, whereas the iron rations would be geared more towards combat. As the iron rations were expected to be eaten, prior to or just after fighting a battle. I could be slightly wrong there. Part of, uh, there would be other things in the bag that might not be part of your iron rations, like your coffee, as you wouldn't be eating coffee on the march. You'd be eating it while you're sitting down at rest and it would be super easy to get to. Uh, things like salt as well. Um, other things that would be in the tornister would be personal effects, things like your pipe and your tobacco. Um, stuff like, um, you know, little cards, mementos from home. Those would also be in your bed bag as well, but mostly in your tornister while marching. A couple really interesting things about the tornister is that the Zeltbahn kit and the Zeltbahn uh, bag that would be in it would only be enough to create half or a portion of a tent. You'd have to get together with your other uh, soldiers to create a full-on tornister, a full-on, not full-on tornister, full-on Zeltbahn, and to create the full getup. Uh, the German army really relied on, uh, you know, teamwork and working together as a unit to properly set themselves up during combat, during marching for rations, for uh, just being at rest and doing warfare. They really, really relied on this ability to work with your other soldiers in groups to um, do anything at all. You, basically, like in World War II, the Zeltbahn required four people to work together and to create one Zeltbahn. You'd have three people sleeping inside, one person on watch, and then you'd shift and rotate that. It was a very similar thing for World War I, just slightly different. So uh, the Zeltbahn includes your personal effects, your things that you're going to need for cleaning your gun, uh, your low boots. Um, it would also include rations. It would also include private purchase items. And it would also include some, uh, you know, I think I already said this, gun cleaning supplies, extra ammunition, 
Uh, there are some pouches on the Tornister that are specifically for extra ammunition. I don't. That's one of the things I don't have, but it's something that is less consequential as um, it's just not really there. Anyway, I've probably wasted enough time talking about all that stuff. Um, later on in the war, as leather became um, a more critical thing in, sh in, uh, in the German supply train, something that they couldn't really get a lot of, I touched up on this on my previous video with the putties, um, they actually started to create more canvas-based tornisters. The M15 and later on the M, I think, 16 or 17 come to mind in which they were mostly canvas. I think the later, later versions, like the late, late war versions, were just basically a canvas rucksack. Uh, in World War II, they just cut out the middleman altogether, and they basically just based it off the M15 with even less leather. And mid-war uh, World War II tornisters were just literally just bags that you put on your back. The very small things. So these did change over the course of the war. I personally really like the look of the early war one, and there are examples of early war tornisters being used throughout the war, as these things didn't really age as much as the boots did because of how they were used. Because of the static warfare, these things weren't really worn much by troops. In fact, they were just sort of used as backpacks to carry their supplies around. When advancing after 1914, they would use a Sturm pack, which was basically just the bare necessities that they would just charge into combat with. Uh, whereas the rest of their supplies would be in their Tornister pack, which would be behind the lines and taken care of by uh, Quartermaster, who would then bring it up when they were done advancing. So with all that out of the way, with all that explanation out of the way, um, let's get into how to pack it. So you can tell that there's two different areas, and I'm just going to real quick move the camera. There's this area, and then there's this area up here. So we're going to focus on this area for now, and then I'll move the camera or the tornister, depending on which way is better, to show the other area. This area specifically that the camera's focused on is the more difficult area to do. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your service shirt, and I have a pretty Barbie... Um, and I have a pretty Barbie World War II model service shirt. That's just kind of what I've been using. I'm still saving up for a proper service shirt. They're not really seen too much, so I don't think it's a really big deal, as the visible parts are all that really matters. And it looks good enough um, regardless. You're basically going to want to fold it up into a square. And I think I'll just cut to where I kind of show what it looks like, because this is going to take me a second. So once you get it all set up, you can just kind of place it in there and just kind of figure it out where everything fits nice. And now you have a nice little square. There's a folding technique for it, and unfortunately I don't really, um, I'm not good at explaining how it works, but you kind of get the picture uh, as to how it should look when it's in your tornister. So then you're going to take your boots, and these are my low boots. These are my um, Hessen Antique low boots. These are older model boots. Um, they're really good. I've really enjoyed using them. I don't think I've ever lost a hobnail. Um, so you're going to put them like this, like so, um, so that your service shirt doesn't get dirty, um, as you'd rather the clean side of your boots be down rather than the dirty side of them. As, as you can see, I've got some mud there that I haven't cleaned off because I'm kind of lazy with this stuff. Uh, I do need to get it clean. Ugh. So you're going to have that like that. And you're going to take this, which is a butter dish. Uh, you can find these on eBay pretty easily. They're, it's a reproduction, probably not the best, but it's a cool little aesthetic piece. Um, they put animal fat, like Greek goose uh, fat, which was the German version of butter for soldiers. And it lasts longer. You can keep it in the heat without too many issues. And it works about the same. It just, it's just a better alternative. It's also healthier and works better for soldiers. That would go right around there. And you'd have your can of... Uh, Fleisch Conserve, which is, uh, now this is the late war label. I got this from Repo Rations. He unfortunately doesn't do things anymore. But you can get canned meat from stores, and you can just slap on a Repro label on it. Um, they're pretty nifty. You can you basically just place that in front of it. And they fit pretty nicely, nice and snug. Um, then after that, it's a lot of just, now up here, there'd generally be a, um, a kit that would have all your toiletries. Stuff like your soap and your um, toothbrush and your tooth powder, because at the time they didn't have toothpaste. They had tooth. Uh, they had the, the toothpaste was a powder form. I have all that in the toiletry bag. Unfortunately, the toiletry bag is just a little bit too big, and I've got it um, elsewhere right now. As it's a little bit tucked away, it's hard to get to. So I'm just doing without it. It's a bit hard to pack due to it being slightly too big. Uh, I'm gonna make a new one soon, and it's custom made. So. 
because it's very hard to find them um, available. So I just have this bag, I mean a bag box that has soap in it that I just place right there. And that's effectively this section. There's a lot more that goes into it. Um, oh, I almost forgot. Afterward, you'd place this towel over the top to keep everything kind of steady and solid. If you have extra room, you can do stuff like throw in some um, ear sats, uh, like coffee rations. I got this from Repo Rations as well. It's not the best. It works um, and whatnot. Throwing in socks goes well too, just because it kind of keeps things quiet and muffles the sound. Uh, and yeah, so then you can just place this over and just kind of tighten it all up in the corners. Pretty basic stuff, and then you just take these two and kind of pull them over, like so. And you just tighten it so that nothing falls out. It's pretty, it's pretty basic, pretty easy stuff to do. Um, there's not too much difficulty in it. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn this around, and we'll get in on the other side. So, now that we have this other side open, um, what goes in here is effectively your personal effects your miscellaneous items, some of your clothing items, your extra stuff. I, I generally put my cooking utensils in here, uh, my scissors, snips basically, my uh, sewing kit. You can get this from Steve Fisher, Stephen Fisher. I'll put a link to that on the uh, in the description as well. Uh, I've got several pairs of gloves that I like to use. I generally put those in there. Uh, I have this for cleaning a Gavir. This is a, a, an original Gavir 98 cleaning stick and rope. It's a really cool find that I found on, I believe, eBay. Um, I don't know if it's original World War I, but it is an original for a Gavir uh, 98. I believe it might have been a uh, one made in the 20s or the 30s. It's in really good condition, so it obviously wasn't ever used. The rope might have been replaced afterward, which I wouldn't be surprised. It doesn't really matter. It's it's a Gavir 98 uh, cleaning tool. Uh, something else that's interesting to note, as I said earlier, these tornisters were packed and developed to be used with a group. Um, so you wouldn't have all your gun cleaning supplies. You'd have to go and meet up with other uh, with other members of your squad to clean your Gavir and to um, take care of everything. Other things that would go in here would be the oil for cleaning your Gavir, and, or, or if you had that, you know, again, every soldier has something different. Um, something else that goes in here is your scarf. Every soldier was issued with one of these. They're very great to have on cold nights when you're camping. I highly recommend you get one. It doesn't have to be great. This is a cheap repro uh, I found on eBay. I don't even think it's specifically made to look like a World War I scarf. It's got like modern tags on it that I haven't cut off, uh, but it works. It works really well and it looks really good. So that generally just goes right here to just kind of keep everything sturdy. Uh, you want to make sure you have at least one or two handkerchiefs. I've got several of them. Um, they're pretty nice. You can use these to actually make sock coffee if, uh, if you want to sacrifice one of them for it, but they're super useful. I really enjoy using them. Uh, the other things that go in there are things like some extra rations, some of your iron rations, stuff like Fleisch extract, um, which are just bouillon cubes with a custom ration. Your uh, coffee tins, uh, which these are coffee rations. Um, I got from Fritz Bar, or Bear. My apologies for that mispronunciation. Um, he added them to an order when I bought my current tunic off of him. Uh, they're really cool. They're super useful. At least I hope these are coffee tins. I hope I'm not using them wrong. Um, the paint, the paint is scratching off quite a bit, but I don't really care too much. And then you have your salt ration bags. Um, I put about 50 grams of salt in these, and they're super useful as well. You can just put those in there. And then that's it. That it, Basically, there'd be more. I have a pipe and some tobacco, but I didn't feel like grabbing it. And you just close it up like so. Make sure that you have it nice and, uh, nice and tightly closed. All right, 
Next step, we have taking care of your bag for your Zeltbon, this poles and stake bag. This isn't a full bag. I've got my stakes in another one because I have a full four-piece uh, Zeltbon I use for reenactment, and I have another bag for all the uh, stakes. So you place that there. You want to take your Feldmutz, Feldmutze, and you're going to take it and turn it inside out. This is to protect the outside from getting dirty. As you can tell, the inside of this is already pretty dirty from use. It's already looking kind of cool with the, um, from just being used and whatnot. It looks kind of original. Not really, but it, it's getting there. Um, so yeah, you'll take this and you'll just basically fold it in half and then you'll just kind of place it there and then you can just close it up like so. And Viola, you have your tor tornister closed up. So, yeah, then you can just kind of maneuver the uh, boots around and get it closed up. You want to get it tight, but you also don't want to stress these uh, these leather straps. You don't want to end up marching, and then you stress them out too much in terms of their strain, and then they snap on you. Because not only is that a pain because you're at an event and they snap on you, but also at the same time, it's very difficult to fix. You have to custom make your own... Um, brand new straps. So now with that all out of the way, uh, we can go over the next part, which is attaching your mess tin to your So zone. what I have here is a uh, post-war 1920s uh, political tin. This is based off the World War I modeled um, uh, mess kits, uh, but it, this is a very, very different model. Um, not very, very different, but this right here is based off the pre-war model mess kit, but this part is based off the mid-war mess kit. So it's a very interesting piece. This one was made in 1929, and it is very similar and has a um, very unique feel to it. When I got it, it was in a Feldgrau color, which was the typical color for the Reichswehr at the time for their mess kits and whatnot. However, I did paint it black. Now, if you are curious as to how to do this, I will just give a brief description and then go into the next step of packing your tornister. You want to get an oil-based paint, and you just basically want to brush it very, very lightly and do multiple coats and then let this dry for a while. What that will do is it'll give it an authentic look as you use it, as the paint will slowly rub off in areas of high wear. And then later you can add some more paint to those areas and just give it a very used look. And it's very cool. As some of these political packs, they've been so uh, neglected in terms of um, in terms of use as they weren't really used too much. They don't look very authentic. But then once you put this paint on and you start using it a lot more, it'll get a very nice look to it. Mixed with the age of it being an old mess kit, it will just look very, very good. So I really like using these old packs. But effectively, when you put this on, I'm, I'm getting off the subject, you're going to place it here. And I'm using these. These are not the correct equipment straps. These are mainly, these are supposed to be used for your Zeltbon and great coat uh, setup. So um, this is a bit inaccurate. I need to get proper straps. So forgive me for using bad straps. But yeah, so, so you'll just wrap it around. You'll put it through this little hole here. And uh, yeah, you want to get it as tight as you can. not going to be perfect, but it'll be good enough. And then this one goes over the strap, like so. And inside that. At least I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. I could be completely wrong, but it doesn't make sense to put it the other way. And again, this one you want to get super tight so that it doesn't bounce around and then bounce out of alignment there. Because this will easily come up and then slip over. So that is how you get all that set up. And now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to fold your Zeltbon and your great coat into proper positioning. Probably one of the easier items here to take care of and get ready for your tornister is the Zeltbon square. Um, this is a pretty straightforward process of folding it, and you're basically just going to fold it into eighths, uh, starting at the bottom here, and just you're going to fold up to around like that to the first button is generally how I do it on both sides. And you just kind of follow that pattern until you've uh, you've gotten it all folded up, and then you're good to go. It's super straightforward. At the end, this is basically what you should have: is just uh, a weird flat tootsie roll almost. This is going to be used to wrap around the great coat once it's all folded up, and then sit over the uh, tornister wrapped around it, 
and it's gonna sit really nice once everything's finished. All right, the next thing on the list is the great coat. This is probably one of the more difficult things to do just due to the nature of it. Um, I already have this one already prepped to go. As you can see, the shoulder boards are unbuttoned and folded back. Um, I have the collar up. It is inside down, and at the bottom, the tail section right there is uh, buttoned together to keep it nice and sturdy. Unfortunately, I can't really get the full thing in frame, however hard I try, so this is about all I have to work with. Now, to start this off, you're going to want to make it very squarish, and they kind of explained it a little bit better on the RI-63 tutorial, but I'm going to try to do my best here. Uh, basically, you're just going to want to lift up this thing here, this bottom piece, enough to make it into sort of a, to just sort of flatten out the bottom. And this is very much, this very much comes into just eyeing it yourself and just trying to figure out what looks good and flat. It's going to take a lot of continuous readjustments until you get it right. And even mine right now isn't too perfect, uh, but eventually you'll do it enough to where it'll start to look good more consistently. This is definitely one of the things that just takes practice to do and uh, I'm a bit out of practice, so it's not gonna look perfect. So after you're done with that, you're basically gonna wanna fold in the corners on the bottom to, f to complete the square. And it's a bit interesting because there are angles that do go down with the uh, edges there, but you can easily fold it in and then go underneath the sleeve, like so. And that creates an almost perfect square once you get it around here. You don't actually want to expose the inside. So this is about as far down as you kind of want to go with making it a square. You want to keep this as square as possible. And you just want to do that to the other side and keep it even. Otherwise, it's going to fold up improperly. This isn't super critical as the great coat is hidden underneath the Zeltbahn. However, if you do get it wrong, it'll look a little funky. And that isn't exactly what you want to do when on the march and, expect, and when you're inspected by your Unta Avasia or uh, Leutnant. So once you're done with that, you're almost ready to go with just rolling it up. And rolling it up is the easier part and yet also the part where you can start to screw up or see uh, the effects of any mistakes made earlier. Um, but basically, to start rolling it up, just use the cord. You're basically just going to fold this back like so until you see the entrances to the sleeves. So once you get around here, you'll be effectively good to go with rolling it up. Now, you can just easily go like so and uh, get it rolled up, but make sure that the sides stay even. That's why you want to keep it square. And there you go. Now you have a very, very well done great coat. Mine not, might not be perfect, but if you've got a lot of practice in it, it'll look really good. Then you set it on top of the Zeltbahn that you folded like so, and then you fold each end over. And mine's a little bit off, so I can just shift it over a tad. And there you go. Then you'll wrap this around your uh, tornister, and you'll have a full set. And I'll go ahead and cut and uh, cut to that. All right, hey guys. And so after doing all that stuff, we can finally put the tornister fully together. Um, so you might have noticed these straps earlier in the video. And uh, these are effectively what hold everything together on the tornister. Let me just get that all set up. Um, so these are a special type of strap that you can buy off Hessen Antique, Nest of, and various um, sellers of Militaria. And uh, they're, they're very important to keep everything together. Now, while Folding the great coat was pretty important not to mess up due to looks and whatnot. This part is also very important not to screw up. If you get this wrong, and this is a reasonably easy to screw up for new people, I screwed it up the first time, uh, you will have a setup that uh, doesn't really stay together. 
And you want to be careful as the great coat will want to unfold on you uh, as you put it on. So it is a little bit difficult. So you're going to want to kind of get this even. And that's where the difficult part comes in is trying to get everything set up evenly. As when you wear it, it's going to, it's going to basically change how it looks. Um, so to get this right, you basically want to put the center of the great coat right there on that center, um, on the center strap pretty evenly. As if you put the great coat on the Zeltbahn right, it'll, uh, it'll work really well. If you didn't, it won't. <laughs> so that's a, just a good starting point. Not too tight because you might need to readjust it. And so it's just good to use it as sort of a starting position. Next, you're going to want to take this side and put that above it because this is just going to get in your way and it's not super critical to have it like perfectly like that as that's not really how most soldiers wore it. I've seen way too many pictures of it sitting like this to care. Some people will say, no, it needs to be perfectly like that. And I'm, I'm just, I'm one of those people where it's like, well, in the pictures, they didn't care. So I'm not going to care. I'll try to get it like that. But if it's not, it's not the end of the world. This is a, uh, and as you can see, this isn't fitting right. So you kind of want to give it a little bit of a shimmy and get it over so that the strap will catch it right. And then you can tighten it down and make it stay. and just make sure that that great coat isn't peeking over too much. Put the strap on like that. And then you can lift it up. And there you go. There is your tornister all set up and ready to be worn. You don't want to be care you do want to be careful as this will slide off every once in a while and so it's just good to leave it in a position where it's not going to unravel itself. And uh, yeah, so that's how you pack your tornister. Bit of a longer video, but I hope the camera angles are better. I know that with my uh, bayonet knot, I got a, a complaint or two about the angle. So I hope that this is, a, is definitely an improved uh, angle and more just easier to view. Um, tomorrow, we'll be, I'll be releasing the video on how to put all this together in your final kit and how to look uh, proper when wearing all your stuff. Thank you guys for watching. Um, huge shout out to my patron backers. If you want to support me, you can go ahead and join them on Patreon or buy some merch from my Teespring shop. And if you want to keep up with me and the community, you can join the Discord or the Reddit that I have just recently launched. You can also follow me on Instagram if you want to just see a bunch of pictures of me and my reenactment gear or random clips from various videos on my YouTube channel. And yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.